Hi everybody, welcome to Stamping with Melva. I'm Melva Peters and you can find me online at stampingwithmelva.com. I live in uh, Ladysmith, British Columbia, which is a little town on Vancouver Island. And tonight I am here to show you, it's, it's, I'm, I call it time for a technique. So every other Tuesday night I jump on with a technique and then on the alternate Tuesday nights, um, I have some kind of mystery challenge for you. So I am here with a technique and I am just checking my phone one to make sure i am live and i am live and i'm hoping okay and it's facebook showing me captions oopsie there we go so i can actually tell that i am live i'm using my phone instead of my webcam because i was having problems with it and i wasn't sure if i had things right but it looks like i have things right and uh hey lynette welcome Okay, so tonight I'm going to show you what I call the soap bubble technique. I don't know if that's actually the right name for it, but I do use soap and I do use create bubbles. And I've done this before, um, but it's been a while since I've done it. And uh, I thought it might be kind of a fun uh, technique to make a background. Um, and I'm also going to use the Let's Set Sail bundle, which is a punch bundle um, from the uh, mini catalog. So not something. So it's something that is, I believe, being carried over into the annual catalog. Um, but it's a great uh, sailboat um, stamp set and dies. And for any, or not dies, a punch. For anybody that knows me, loves knows I love to sail. And we used to have a sailboat. So this was right up my alley when I saw it. All right. Let me switch over. Okay. No, let's, that one. There we go get it right okay so this is the let's set sale bundle again it's a great stamp set with some really i love these sentiments you could use these sentiments for any kind of occasion hope your day hope it's your best day ever adventure awaits let your dreams set sail could be a great retirement card if you make retirement cards for people or even birthday cards for example so and then the punch punches out the two sails and then the the mast uh and the boat Okay, so I have got some, I'm using the Starry Sky uh, uh, cardstock. So I've cut this um, four and a quarter by 11, and I'm going to score it at five and a half. Hopefully that scored. Yes, it did. Okay. And as always, grab your bone folder and fold into the mountain or into the raised score line, which is that side. So we'll just give it a really good crease with our bone folder. And then I've got, I'm using some of the new in colors. So this is, um, I love this com color combination. It seems to fit well, I don't know, from my perspective for a sailboat. So it's Starry Sky and Sweet Sorbet. And then I've gone ahead and cut out um, I'm using shimmery white. You probably can't see that, but um, I find shimmery white works best with these techniques. If you're not using watercolor paper, shimmery white works best if you're using water. Um, it seems to hold the water um, not too badly. So this is cut out using the second largest of the uh, scallop contour dies. And this is what I'm going to um, use. I actually have cut a couple of pieces because you, when you do this technique, you will end up with with lots of bubbles. And so you can make a couple or even more, hey, Catherine, even more um, of these backgrounds. All right, so what you need is a glass with some water. Now this is a fairly large glass. It doesn't have to be this big. And I filled it maybe a third, third-ish full of water. And I'm using a reinker. So I'm using the Starry Sky. Sometimes I find you need quite a bright color to get color um, using these bubbles. So what, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some detergent or um, dish soap into this. So you don't need a ton, just enough to create some bubbles. And you can always add more. So start little. And that's the same with the colors. So this is the reinker, And you do need a fair amount in here, but let's start with just like four or five, maybe six um, drops in here. It will depend on how much water. So this looks quite dark, but we will see. So the next thing you need is a straw. 
And uh, then you're going to take and create some bubbles. And this is where we're going to see if uh, how dark this is. And so as you see these bubbles come up, you can see the bubbles are going to be quite light. All right, I've got a bunch of bubbles. That's why I've got two of these pieces. And you basically, oops, and I've got both. This is going to be really light. So I am going to put some more re anchor in. Like I said, start little and you can always add more color. That's probably better. And you blow your bubbles up. Now this is a much better color. Doesn't that look an interesting mixture? And then you just take your paper and just kind of run it over the bubbles. If you run out of bubbles, you can you can always uh, blow more bubbles. And so you can just kind of keep going until you get this as dark and as covered as you want. I'm going to just set that down and I'm going to, while I've got some bubbles here, I'm going to do my second piece. This is just such a fun technique. I don't know. Just, you can do multicolors if you want. Um, I always just find that one color is kind of what I like to do. Um, and like I said, you can leave white space if you want, or you can cover the whole thing in bubbles like I'm trying to do. There we go great way to create your own kind of paper, designer paper. I'm just going to grab a baby white and all I'm doing, a yeah, dry baby white probably is best, but this is just a little damp and I'm just patting it until I kind of get the, the bubbles off. And you can see that these are very different, different backgrounds. Here I got, this is the first one I did and I've got quite dark spaces, but that's still great. And then this one, I really love this one. It looks like kind of the ocean. It cooks, I don't know. Um, you know, where this would look great is the, um, the waves of the ocean um, bundle. Um, if you didn't get a hold of the uh, designer series paper before it was gone, um, you can create your own backgrounds for the, the waves of the ocean. You could let this dry, but it's actually not too, too bad. This one's wetter. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to save that darker one. Um, and this, isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, so pretty. It definitely, the starry sky is quite blue. It's not as blue as Night of Navy, but this is making it look very purpley against the sweet sorbet. And that's okay with me. It's just really pretty. All right, so that's gonna be my, the front of my card. So let's now do some stamping. So I thought I'd show another technique. So sometimes when you've got a punch, so if I bring my punch in, it's hard to figure out where to punch or where to stamp so that you can punch um, your pieces out. And so here's a trick for you. I took a scrap of my, just some basic white cardstock and I punched out the shapes. So I just took it and inserted it and punched it out. Now I've got my Stamparatus here and I'm just gonna lay this on this piece. I've laid some shimmery white cardstock and I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna lay this piece on and I'm just gonna use the magnets. Now, this is a photopolymer stamp set. So you need, I've got my extra foam cushion on here. Um, so you have enough cushion to make this work. Now you want to grab your, the stamps that fit and lay your stamps with the, um, the stamp, stamping side down. And you just fit them into the um, into the the hole where they where I've punched out. So I'm going to do the two sails because I'm going to do those in sweet sorbet, and I'm going to lift up carefully. It doesn't matter so much on this. Now I've got my two stamps on. 
And then if I grab another platform, I'm going to put the, the body, the boat and the mast into the, the holes where I punched out. You could, I could do it on the same platform and just turn over the platform, or you could do it all on the same platform. Hey, Linda, welcome. Um, if you are, are using the same colors, for example, and I'm just going to grab a pair of my paper snips so that this, I can kind of keep my paper down as I pull this off. There we go. Get my magnets over a little bit more so it doesn't pull off. Okay. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to stamp my sails in sweet sorbet. I love a sailboat with red sails. So let's do that. And so because I've positioned these um, in the holes, I should be able to. I could have lifted that template off. But that's okay. I stamped right into the holes. And now I'm going to stamp the oops, this, the boat part in sweet sorbet. So tap, tap. We'll bring this back down. Pressing down so I get it fully. There we go. So I have to tell you one little pet peeve I have with this um, with this uh, sailboat stamp, um, at least the boat part. So when you're sailing and you're into the wind, which you always sail into the wind, this little um, flag at the top would never be facing forward. <laughs> so I always have to laugh when I look at these this stamp because when you're sailing, that that would definitely go uh, towards the the back of the boat because the wind would take it back there. But that's just my little pet peeve about this. But other than that, I love this. Okay, I just gonna just take a, a little bit off the edge so I can get mine. So now when I use my let's take a little bit more off. Now when I use my punch. All I have to do is take and line up my punch with my stamped images. And voila, you can punch them all out. There we go. Perfectly. So I, I keep my template or want my template in with my stamp so that I always have it. So now I have my, my sailboat and my two sails. And we can bring them back and put them on our on our background. Okay, so let's start gluing these, putting my water over to the sides so I don't don't uh, <laughs> get all of that all over me. Hey, Jocelyn, welcome. All right, so we'll just put this piece um so my piece of sweet sorbet i actually cut it a little smaller than i normally do i just because i wanted more of the starry sky so the starry sky was four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half and the sweet sorbet was three and three quarters uh by five and then this piece again was the um was cut out of the second largest of the scallop circles and i am just going to use some liquid glue. I think it's dry enough that it shouldn't be a problem to adhere it down. It does um, it does dry pretty quick. You could take your heat tool to it if uh, you found it wasn't dry, but sometimes you can make these in advance. So you've got a bunch of these backgrounds and you're all set to go, especially since I have a lot of bubbles um, and a lot of water. Um, I might actually uh, do a bunch more when I um, finish. Isn't that a fun background? Okay. And I realized I've got some adhesive. I'm just going to take... You know, Stampin' Up! doesn't sell these adhesive removers, but you can get them at the dollar store. I think they just work really well just if you've got a little bit of adhesive showing just to lift those up. I really wish Stampin' Out would start selling them again. All right, 
So now we can put our sailboat. I'm going to put my sentiment across the bottom. So my sailboat's going to kind of go up like this. And I'm going to take and use, uh, let's see. I'm going to take and use, I don't know if that's going to go. I was going to take these adhesive strips, but I don't think that's going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dimensionals and always along this edge of the dimensionals, you always have this extra, extra piece. So don't make that, don't let that go to waste. I want a really thin strip, which is why I, it was easier to cut it off of that than to take the foam adhesive strips. So I just, this mast, I just want to, it to be popped up. So, so if you need little bits of your, uh, of uh, the foam dimension, uh, dimensionals, just take it and use the pieces off of the, um, off of the edges of uh, either your mini dimensionals or your your regular dimensionals. And again, I just want a little piece here. Um, so again, I'm just going to take and cut. And put these on. Got my boat stuck to my fingers. There we go. I'm going to have to trim that off, but that's okay. I can do that in a minute. And then this one will go Ah, little pieces. Okay. There we go. So we'll just trim these so they don't stick out the end. That wasn't so much of a trimming as a just pulled it off. But this one I will try and trim. There we go. Okay. Oh, I've got these bits. There we go. It's sticking to me. All right. So let's take and put our boat kind of up a little bit. Not, I'm going to put my sentiment at the bottom, so I want to leave room for that. And now I can use regular dimensionals on my sails. So that sail is the foresail, and this one is the, the main sail. And I'm just going to put one dimensional. So we will just put that like that. It's got a good, a good bit of wind in these sails. All right, and we will put that like that. Oh, there we go. Looks like they're off on a great journey. All right, now I need a piece. So I've got this is my um, my, my shimmery white, and so since I I. Uh, used shimmery white on it. I'm just going to use this piece and I am going to stamp this sentiment that says hope your day, hope it's your best day ever. Hey Sandy. All right. And we're just going to stamp that like that. You could take, you could punch this out, you could um, use a die cut, but I don't know. If you watch me before, you know, you know I tend to just fussy cut my sentiments. So we're just going to take it like that. I'm going to trim it a little bit. I got more, more white at the bottom and more white on this side. So at least trim it up so it's a little bit even. There we go. Before I do that, and I guess I should have done it before, I was going to put some, uh, this is the Baker's Twine. What's it called? This is the um, new in color Baker's Twine pack. Great. I mean, it looks like it's expensive. There are actually 10 yards of uh, twine on each of these rolls and it comes in all of the new in colors. So I'm going to take and wrap around this. I'm gonna wrap it around the whole card base. I could have just wrapped it around the, the uh, sweet sorbet piece, but I didn't think about that until it's too late. So let's just take and wrap this around twice. And then I'm just going to tie, hopefully, tie a bow. Yeah. My fingers aren't working. Let's take that. Thanks, Linda. 
So if you're coming in through YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get notified when I go live uh, or when I post a video tutorial. I haven't found a way to do notifications on YouTube at this point in time. So, all right, there we go. Let's see if I can get this to be at least a little bit even. Like that. And I could use a, I might use a glue dot. We'll see how that, uh, that holds. I'm looking for my dimensionals. There they are. So when I have a piece that's a little bit bigger, I always stagger my dimensionals and don't put them kind of right across the middle. I find that if I put them right across the middle, I get, um, it kind of wobbles. And so if you stagger your dimensionals top and bottom, you will find that your sentiment doesn't, doesn't wobble or sag. And we will just put that in the middle like that. And that will hold my, my twine ribbon or twine uh, bow. There we go. All right. And the last thing, well, two last things. Um, one is I have this piece of um, shimmery white and this is cut four inches by five and a quarter. And I am just going to take and adhere this and I will write a note for whoever gets this card rather than stamping. The other thing I could have stamped, there are some birds in this um, stamp set. So I could have stamped some birds on here, but I didn't think about that. Okay, so there's the inside. And now these are the uh, in color, the new in color matte decorative dots. So let's put some of these on. And we will use the ones and they are um, two different sizes, but they actually are, um, I'm, I don't know how many different shades they are, but they are kind of an ombre effect. And so dark to light. I'm not positive about how many colors there actually are, but we will use a combination of the light and the dark. There we go. All right. So a couple of techniques here um, for you tonight. So one is the bubble technique. Again, um, use, you don't need a ton of water. Um, you don't need a ton of dish soap in it. And then go light, uh, start light on the color in your, um, for your uh, re-inker. I, um, I had to add because I got, I went too light and then just play around with it because you definitely get different, um, a different look. Um, this one definitely is more solid than this one is, but still it turned out nice. Um, so that's one technique. And then the other technique was to um, use uh, your uh, magnetic, or not your magnetic. Somebody's asked me about the magnetic plate yet, and I'll uh, answer your question in just a minute. Use your stamp apparatus to, um, to uh, create a template or create a template and then stamp. Um, using uh, your stamp apparatus so that you can actually stamp your entire set of images in one go and punch it out in one go. Um, just makes it a whole lot easier than I always find I have to kind of stamp it and then put that little piece of paper in to fit it in and it uh, it just works better if you create a template and use your use your stamp apparatus. Um, have I tried the new magnetic plate yet? No, not yet. I haven't got my order. Um, I placed my order Tuesday morning. It has shipped. Um, but I haven't got it yet. So I don't think it'll be here until next week. So I will definitely show you when I, um, when I have it uh, so that you can see, um, I'm excited to have my magnetic plate again. Um, yeah, so I will let definitely let you know and show you how it works. Um, all right, everybody, thanks for joining me. Um, I will be live on Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific with a, a new project for you, and then again at 12 Pacific on Sunday. So I hope you'll be able to join me then. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. Happy stamping. Bye.